So I, I'm going to spin on that one for a minute because Brian just said something really important. Put yourself very quickly in the position of the woman who's having that done to her. And so watch, watch this one. Um, you open a car door for a woman. And in your head, you think you're doing it because you're scoring points to be nice to get something. In your mind, you swear you're giving at that point. You swear you're giving, but deep down, you think you're scoring points, and then you go to dinner, and then you do this, and then you do that, and you're kind of building up all these points. Bingo. I've talked to literally thousands of women about this. And what do you think they feel like? And the answer is they feel like a whore. They feel like they're being bought. They can feel the difference. They can feel the difference. Easily. If you open that door because I'm a man. Now we're getting the good point. I'm a man. This is not a yeah. And that's what I do. And I don't care if you're my, a little 80 year old or you're, or you're who you are. I'm doing this because it's what I do as a man. That's very that's different. That's very, totally different. Man. I've had women, when I explained the right way to do it, almost cry yeah. because they wish men would be that way. And, and so the right way to do this is you know, I do this because this is my world, my car, my restaurant, my experience, and I'm bringing you along with me. And I think you're amazing enough, I'd like to bring you along with me into my world. So I'm gonna open my car door, place you in my car. Wouldn't you like to come at this restaurant that I've chosen? That's a completely different thing. That like melts women, mm -hmm. just, there's some, I wish I could articulate it be, somehow better, but... Because you're not asking for anything in return. You're nothing. just being a masculine. You're being you're solid. Being masculine. Yeah, you're, and when you say no, you're saying no because the no is needed in that moment or, or it's, it's mm -hmm. the right thing to say. It doesn't mean I don't say no, I'm not going to do that or I don't want to go there, but I say it out of integrity. I don't say it as a technique to win, to win her over. Like, no, I don't want to go to that restaurant. I, 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 I'd really much rather go here. And right. why is that giving? because now I'm being honest with her. So he just touched on something else. You hear a lot of misnomers that's misunderstood that you need to be a jerk and need to be a mean guy to get them to respond. And that's something that's old school, completely misunderstood. No, you need to be a man who is honest. Honest and, and, and real, be real and in your integrity. And sometimes that means saying the tough words. And it also, the other time, means saying the great things. Because exactly. I, when you see me talk at Limitless, I talk a whole lot about evolutionary psychology and our wiring and how we're wired. And I do very much believe that men were, our purpose here is to give women our gifts, mm -hmm. to provide an environment where they are safe and protected psychologically and physically to a degree, and give gifts. So I, I'm not saying not be a nice guy. I give great gifts but you give them for a completely different reason. If it even smells like you think you're gonna get something in return, it reads all wrong. And you'd be surprised when you give uh, your masculine, your groundedness, your solidness, your presence, your leadership as a masculine man, and, she's, and she, a lot of these women can lead themselves, so don't think they can't, yeah, but they no. surrender it to you because you're a masculine, solid man they can trust. Right. They start giving you that feminine gift and they don't ask for anything. They just, it just comes in abundance and it's so fucking beautiful. Uh -huh. And now you're giving completely to each other in a cycle out of choice, not out of have to, because we enjoy it. And it becomes as in the, every date becomes beautiful. Every woman becomes sweet. And and I say, like I say to my wife, who now find you know she believes it, is the honeymoon lasts forever. Yeah. You get the cycle right. But the you got You got You got to you gotta be aware of the polarity, and you got to be aware of the tension. Polarity. Tension and polarity are, are synonymous in this in this case. Right. But yeah, there's a, there's this tension that needs to be there to keep it alive. Like. Imagine this building would not stay up without a certain amount of tension. Uh, my body would not stand erect if I didn't have a spine and a, and a rib cage. You know, you need a certain amount of tension to keep the structure in place. Too much is tension and opposition. It becomes painful. Too Locks little, down. too little. So there's this, it, this is why you got to be able to feel your emotions. There's this point at which you dance in. When you're in that point, it's flow state for, the, for all you athletes out there, people that understand flow state. Mm -hmm. And when you're in that flow state, you don't need to think about what to say anymore. Because in that flow state, will always fl teach you and flow you and move you. And be communication itself becomes flow. Be mm -hmm. Communication becomes a dance. And I always love to refer to that, that, that when you're on a date or when you're hanging out or you're just out with your girl and you're, 
it's a dance. It's a dance of motion and energy and flow. It's not logic. It's not a game to be mastered. It's, 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 a, it's, you know, it's like our mating ritual in a sense. Yeah, it's, yeah, and, it's, and you just gotta, and you'll notice when it's gone. And you're like, how do I? And if you're conscious of it, you can bring it back. You said something about uh, you were out to lunch with a woman in um, in Europe, and she said, "Where did you go?" Ah. Uh, and, and, and what it was about was... I was in my head. You were in your head for a minute. I think I she, said that in a different conversation, she, though, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, and she caught it in a second. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. In a, in a oh, second. Oh, there's... The, the women in Romania are so tuned up. They make... Yeah. It, it's their ability to pick up the subtle cues when you're emotionally off almost blow my mind. Yeah. The, the, Euro, the Eastern European women, European women in general, man, I would be off a little bit, and they're like, where are you? Exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. I loved it because then I got to also, when their feminine was on, mm -hmm. I could feel every bit of it coming through their eyes. I could feel the deepest, subtlest communication. Because I'll do that to women. I'll be like, what's going on? Where are you at right now? And they're yeah, like, absolutely. And they usually give me one little, oh, I'm fine. I'm like, no, seriously, I want to know where you're at right now. Okay, boom. <laughs> <laughs> and here it comes. And, and uh, it's beautiful. It yeah, makes, it's pretty amazing. Whereas I find, um, uh, I don't know if I want to go into that. Um, well, I find a lot of women, in, 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 women that, that, that have lo some women have lost touch with this, this part of themselves, and they're developing Blah. so much of their masculine that they've lost touch with how to be there in their feminine. And, uh, and you have to be a really solid man for them to surrender to it. And when I go over there, it's so quick, it's so simple, it's so easy, and it's so beautiful. But these same women, if you're, a, if you're one of those guys that's not in touch with it, hasn't got your own groundedness, your own solid, it doesn't have these points, it's functioning from his head, these same women will probably eat you for lunch. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they're going to go into that feminine dark side, which is that pushing and that. They're, they're trying to wake you up, guys. They're not doing it to be a bitch. It's By instinct. By the way, that was really an interesting point you just made. So they're trying to wake you up. So uh, think about this. I always, I always love this one is, you know, Orange County Housewives. Do you realize it's the husbands that made those women so psycho? Mm -hmm. And the reason was, was because woman wants a Porsche, guy gives a Porsche. Woman wants a private school for the kid, gets it, wants a big house. And what's happening is at every turn, the guy's giving it wrong as a beta male, which frightens her that he's not strong enough. And what does she do? She shoves him. To try and test him Can I to say, get him to wake up. Giving it wrong as a beta male. Let's go back to what we said earlier. Yeah. I'm giving you all of this to get you to be happy, not because I really want to give it. Just what is it going to take to make you happy? Therefore, you're not giving, you're right. taking. So you're I, saying, I'm just be nice so, just so you'll be nice to me. You so that you'll be nice to me so I can score enough points so you won't yell. You know, all this crazy The points stuff. again, yeah. Yeah, the point thing again. And then she loses all respect for you. And she gets crazier and crazier and crazier and pushes harder and harder. This is commonly called a shit test taken to an extreme. Yeah. So all of these shows, I always roar at them, especially when they bring the husbands in sometimes, because the husbands, they all did it, and you just see these betas, you know, wealthy, successful guys that just created this horror show of a relationship. And some of these guys, if they could just see the dynamics of what they're doing, they could actually fix it because they Absolutely. were strong enough to build these huge companies. They, they just don't see it. Yeah. And um, it's amazing to me. Yeah. That there, was a, there was this girl I was out with in Romania. We were walking around a lot and she was showing me the sights. And she was beautiful. She was amazing. I had a blast hanging out with her. And we walked, uh, we're walking down these streets and the people in Romania drive like fucking maniacs. And they park right on the sidewalks and they, double park and they just it's horns are going off every five seconds because they're using horns not just to hey get out of the way buddy they're using horns just to let you know they're coming close to you because they get so fucking close beep 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 yeah. beep, beep and they're just cutting wow. and it blows my mind so we're walking around and cars are backing up like as we're crossing the street and and they get this close and they and it's like everybody can feel each other there's this flow and I looked at her and she goes this is just normal here you know this is how we are I'm not worried about it because I was I would move her like a gentleman, like I like to do. I like I put her on the left side, so or on the side that's away from the street, or, and I move her away from this car. Yeah. And she's like, you know, I walk these streets all day. And it's like I'm used to it. I know exactly where the cars are. And I looked at her and I said, I know you do, and I know you know exactly what's going to happen because you you grew up here. Right. But right now I'm the man. You're the woman. We're hanging out together, and I I'm gonna move you around and be the masculine because we're on a date, and we're gonna enjoy this. And, when, and I know you'll be fine when I'm not here. Right. 
and she loved it. She but was, she totally loved it. Yeah. Think about this one. And this is, this is okay, but it can go very wrong. It, we've sort of had a lot of these kinds of discussions tonight. Yeah. Is that um, men generally are rewarded through life for being in our masculine, in general. I could get into the subtleties of how corporations and some cultural things, living in big corporations, some of the cultural things of America, it turned us into beta pussies. Um, but having said that, women are rewarded, are forced by our society to move from their masculine to their feminine. And I could spend a long time on that and let's not, we'll do that later. But they do move between it. And most societies force most women to get, spend so much time in their masculine, they get stuck. Yep. And they have to, they don't like it. And they're better and at it than you, most men in their society. They're better <laughs> at it than a lot of men, just like a lot yeah. of the best actors are shy actors. Yeah. Um, but man, when you are a true man and you set them free to be in their feminine, at least for a period of time, so this is this is a huge key because women can go to work and let's say she's a CEO of her own company yeah and she can be in her masculine all day and she's more than capable of doing that because you can be in your feminine all day being an artist some guys do that yeah that's true and too. Um, and and then she can come home but ultimately her body if she's truly feminine needs to run feminine for a while so she's looking for a solid masculine man she can turn her masculine off and surrender that energy to and then she can be completely feminine for him and then you receive the benefit of that. Just like you're looking for feminine to receive instead of being your own all the time in relationship. Otherwise there's no point in being in relationship. You know, um, that exchange of energy. It's gotta be the right balance what, for the two of you. And there might be parts of your life as a couple where she takes the masculine. But in my relationships, I'm gonna predominantly be the, the, the masculine in most relationships because that's where I choose to live and I like living there. That's what my body likes. And I listen to it, just like yeah. the, fem the feminine, beautiful women I date are the same way. Am I saying they don't have access to masculine? I don't have access to my feminine? No, mm -hmm. we do. I, and then right. feminine not meaning that I act like a woman, feminine meaning that I'm in touch with my emotions. That's how I can so good at reading her emotions because I'm in my masculine, but I can feel her emotions because I have access to my own. Right. So the, the key here is that men throughout history all have been built to be great at physical tension. The tension of, of like a fireman running into a burning building and saving yeah. lives, going into yeah. combat, building something. Women were built to be great at emotional tension. The they ability were. to step into emotion and feel them fully with you. And now in this stage of development, we're learning to, men are learning to be good at facing emotion, which is what you're learning. That's what all this dating movement is teaching. Right. And then women have learned already, they're a little ahead of us on the curve, to be pretty good at masculine good at masculine actually and now we're learning to say okay i've got these other skills but where do i really want to live like a left or a right hand what do i want to use most of the time at least in my relationship most of the time i want to be in my masculine and uh, most women i meet not all most want to be in their feminine most of the time when they're most in their the relationship and, and and i am not here to judge you or anybody in that it, the more you get to know me you people like brian know that i've had ex pretty amazing experiences with thousands, literally thousands of couples. And uh, what I know is anything goes. I've seen relationships that work really well with the guy being very much in his feminine full time and the woman very much in her masculine. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen all kinds of things. So there's no one right way to do this. Right. But I still do believe that there's some fundamental wiring that is common with all of us that goes back about 150,000 years. And I do basically believe, my opinion, is that the male's role, and, and again, I'm not going to spend much time, is to create a bubble. Whenever I meet a new woman, I say, from the, for the, from the first moment, I say, we now have a bubble of us. I say this. And I say, no one is going to know what's going to happen between us. No one can see it. They think they can see it. They can't see it and it's us from here on out. And as the relationship evolves, I say my job is to create a very large protective masculine bubble. Yep. And by protective, I mean primarily protecting her emotions, her ability to move between her masculine and feminine, her ability to do all of the feminine butterfly moves and all these things that women do. 
And her job is to move around within this bubble to force me to become more and more masculine, stronger and stronger, bigger and bigger. Well, she pushes on the weak spots in the bubble. She pushes on, yeah. this is like, not like bad stuff that happens. This is no, not it's a beautiful. good thing. Works. You learn I mean, it's a lot. It's beautiful. Thing. If you don't get angry and don't get triggered, there's so much you learn and grow from that stuff. And that's, I just relax into it when a woman comes to me, Brian, I needed to talk about something. Okay, let's, let's bring it on. Because this is a moment yeah. where we're going to bond and go deeper. Most right. guys are like, they go into defensive. And I'm like, no, let's open. This is where we open and stay open in the middle of this. Mm -hmm. And it happens in reverse, too. As right. you grow bigger in your own life, because I'm always growing, I'm always working on myself. I'm going to create space that she needs to fill up. And if she refuses to fill up that space, I'm going to lose interest in her at some point. Right. And so it works in both ways. If she's pushing, I'm also growing and pulling. And that dance, when you two are in sync, you found the right woman that can fill your space and, you, and you're, you're right at that right level growing together, it can be fucking beautiful. Yeah. And so many times couples come together, they're close, and then one of them grows and the other doesn't. And the other doesn't want to, and they start closing down as the other one grows. And watch what happens to the relationship. Yeah. Like. Falls you know, apart. Crumbles, crushes, explodes. Resentment builds and then death starts. To, you know. Yeah, I, you know, it, it, this is all theory. And um, it's kind of hard to find examples, hard examples, unless you're trying it yourself. And I highly recommend you do. Uh, and I've seen many examples of it. I don't like using Hollywood stars because it's sort of warped. You don't really see them. But I really do like using presidents and presidents' wives of the United mm -hmm. States. Okay, that's a good one. Because you got a good reverse couple out there right now. Yes. So, so it's very interesting. Obama and his wife. Michelle. Michelle, thank you. And uh, Clinton and Hillary. Hillary. Uh, Johnson and Lady Bird. Um, uh, uh, Franklin and Eleanor. Those are very interesting ones because the women can get very much into their masculine. Mm -hmm. But those women also get very much into their feminine. The one couple where I think they got a lot of reversal going on is Bill and Hillary. Yeah. Yeah, you see how that's much That's the one that's most interesting to me. Yeah, Bill flows and he's got this this emotional fluidity to him. Right. He's, he's 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 suave and Hillary's you know, mm -hmm. and it's it's fun to watch them too. I think it's fascinating. Right, right, right. And and so I I use I think that's a great model to kind of discuss it because the question is, is Bill, is what we're seeing is flexibility, where he's just moving to be large enough to get out of her way and let her do her thing, and it appears to be feminine because the guy's wow. got a lot of masculine things, or is it actually? A polarity reversal that's it, occurred. Here's the th question: Is that there's a lot of discussion. It's fun, huh? There's also the discussion of whether they're even a real couple. So, you know, in that yeah, you got right. a problem right there. A lot of people have right, said right. it's just a couple for 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 you know for politics, but right. um, and that Bill's got people on the side, and I wouldn't be surprised at any of that to be honest. He's super suave, and in in the Art of Seduction, which is a, a Robert Green book, he wrote about the seducers mm -hmm. of the world. That's fascinating, great. fascinating oh, read. Yeah. He describes a, a really good seducer called a Dan. Dandy. And the dandy is half masculine, or not half, but he's really developed masculine and feminine, and he uses them in conjunction to make him into this weird, kind of unique, like interesting character. And this is where you get, like, think of Marilyn Manson, think of um, Prince, think of Bill mm -hmm. Clinton, think of um, uh, go back to the 1700s and those guys who, what did they call, that had the foils and they fought duels and they oh, slapped each other with yeah, the gloves right, and they were all right. proper. You right. know, and that there's this mixture of it's masculine, just Renaissance, yeah. yeah, masculine and feminine, right. that uh, uh, that makes them fascinating. But they're still really masculine in their masculine, mm -hmm. and that that's that. There's the polarization, yet they've got access to all this emotion, this 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 fluidity too, mm -hmm. it makes them fascinating. Yeah, it really does. That's mm -hmm. a great book, by the way. It's, it's a phenomenal really read. Book. It's a thick so, read. So, so some of the things I guess I'll, I'll close on the thing about politics is like, for example. A very simple question. Could Barack have become who he became without Michelle? You know, it's could I become the man who I am without my wife and continue to grow? Because you know me pretty well and you've watched me go through spurts in my life when I'm kind of flat and not growing and other times when I'm very much expanding. 
Well, here, here's my take on that is... And you've seen the women that I was attached to at the time. I think it's yes and no. Yeah. I don't know what I mean by that is, is if you find the right woman, nothing's going to make you grow faster. You two are going to make an awesome team. She's going to feed you all that feminine if you're masculine. Right. And in that, you're going to use that energy and you're going to create and manifest more than you ever have. If you find the um, wrong woman, nothing could de destroy everything fast, if faster than that too, and <laughs> it could go downhill like this. And that's uh, a great way to answer it. Yeah, it really is. And so, I, uh, I mean, you've hit on two key things. Um, if you go to Limitless Summit, uh, LimitlessMan.com, Limitless Man Summit, and go to our core values, Brian's touched on two of them tonight. One of them was this one: is that in most of our lives, maybe yours, maybe not, the number one thing that is going to give us the greatest pleasure, the greatest expansion, the greatest challenges, and, and some studies show the greatest financial success is our relationship with a woman. And conversely, if you've experienced anything like what I have, and I think you've done better than I have, um, the destruction, the horrific crash and burns and emotional trauma of a bad relationship, uh, it's, it's your relationship with a woman. And isn't it funny how we train and go to college for years, we train to do any kind of job, we train to do any kind of sport, we train to do any kind of thing. And most men spend absolutely no time. If I ask a guy on the street what he thinks, He'll give me a couple quips, he thinks they work, and then I'll walk away and not challenge him because I know it's not working. Mm -hmm. And um, so one of the key things that we believe in is that we're doing something very good because we're connecting the dots all the way from hello through the entire relationship. That's one thing. And we're also, everyone at Limitless is looking at this from a holistic viewpoint. The other point that Brian brought up earlier, very maybe about uh, 15 minutes ago, was one of the key goals with us at Limitless is to become a fraternal tribe of high-level men where every woman we meet is left more vibrant because of our presence. Mm -hmm. We are here to give. Just like everybody's here to give. The more you give value to the world without asking for anything in return, the more you get back. But unfortunately, most people have tried to give and they've done such a, they didn't really give. They were actually keeping score. And in that, they didn't get a return. <laughs> didn't get a return. And then they say, this doesn't work. And right. that's not really giving. Thanks for watching part two of my interview with Roy Stone. I feel extremely honored to be at this year's Limitless Man Summit, where I'll be one of 30 master instructors teaching with combined experience of over 300 years, giving you over 30 live hours of intensive training. Tickets are on sale now at the LimitlessManSummit.com for only $395. I'll see you there in person.